This is a dude competing in men's weightlifting competitions as of 2013. After this person was competing as a male in male weightlifting competitions, take some estrogen and now you can compete with the females. And now we're going to pretend that this is an even playing field. Let me just put it this way to the women. That is wildly unfair. I'll tell you what is an important moment in sport. Apparently, and this is a, it is a glorious moment. It is truly incredible. An Olympics, New Zealand weightlifter. Okay, and this weightlifter's name is Laurel Hubbard. Will become the first transgender athlete to compete at the Olympics. Now, you got to love the language here. Okay, because the reality is that a normal head, that so much of our media is dedicated to obscuring actual stories by just changing the verbiage, by just changing the wording. Now, the actual headline should be, if we all spoke English together, the actual headline would be biological male to become first biological male to compete at the games in women's weightlifting. Right? Because that's the story. If the story were just a biological female of any sort of identity, competing against other women, everybody like, okay, that's not a story. The reason it's a story is because this is a dude, okay? And this dude is a biological male. Hubbard will compete in the super heavyweight 87 plus kilogram category. Her selection made possible by an update to qualifying requirements in May. Again, the simple adoption of the pronouns demanded changes the nature of the story. Because if you just read that sentence, you'd be like, I don't understand why this is a story, right? If you, if you just read the first couple of paragraphs, you would not understand what exactly is going on if you spoke English from like two years ago, right? Weightlifter Laurel Hubbard will become the first transgender athlete to compete at the Olympics after being selected by New Zealand for the women's event at the Tokyo Games, a decision set to reignite a debate over inclusion and fairness in sport. Hubbard will compete in that category, her selection made possible by an update to qualifying requirements in May. Hey, you have to get all the way to the third paragraph before you understand what the hell is going on. The 43-year-old, will be the oldest lifter at the games, had competed in men's weightlifting competitions before transitioning in 2013. Okay, let me just put it this way to the women. That is wildly unfair. This is a dude who is a full dude in every respect and continues to be a full dude just with either some surgeries or some hormone therapy, but was competing in men's weightlifting competitions as of 2013, which means you had the full bone and muscle development of a man all the way, not just through puberty, but through adulthood and was competing against dudes in the same category. And now we're going to pretend that this is an even playing field and that it makes no difference. Hubbard said, I'm grateful and humbled by the kindness and support that has been given to me by so many New Zealanders. The New Zealand Olympics chief, Karen Smith, said it was a historic moment in sport and for the New Zealand team. She is our first Olympian who has transitioned from male to female, except you can't become a female after being a male. That is not physically possible. We do know that there are many questions about fairness of transgender athletes competing in the Olympic Games, but I would like to take this opportunity to remind us all that Laurel has met all of the required criteria. Okay, let's just be fair about this. There, is, there are no, honestly, how many other 43-year-old weightlifters are there in the Olympics? I'd love to see a stat. How many 43-year-old competitors are there in actually physically demanding sports in the Olympics? You see a lot of 43-year-old sprinters in the Olympics? Seem kind of weird? Maybe the reason is because the biology is different here, gang, but you're not allowed to say that. Hubbard has been eligible to compete at the Olympics since 2015, which the IOC issued guidelines allowing any transgender athlete to compete as a woman, provided their testosterone levels are below 10 nanomoles per liter for at least 12 months before their first competition. So literally a year and a half after this person was competing as a male in male weightlifting competitions, take some estrogen, and now you can compete with the females. Truly incredible. Some scientists have said the guidelines do little to mitigate the biological advantages of those who have gone through puberty as males. Yeah, you think? Advocates for transgender inclusion argue the process of transition decreases that advantage considerably. And that physical differences between athletes means there is never truly a level playing field. Um, there are broad categories of male and female in human biology and all mammalian biology, as it turns out. But, you know, I'm rooting for Hubbard, frankly. I think that it's I, I think it's great. I think Hubbard should win. And I think that every male who takes some estrogen should compete in all the female categories. And then we can truly have a, a more truly diverse and inclusive society, a true meritocracy, if you will. Hubbard's gold medal wins at the 2019 Pacific Games in Samoa, where she topped the podium ahead of Samoa's Commonwealth Games champion, Figega Stowers, triggered outrage in the host nation. Samoa's weightlifting boss said Hubbard's selection for Tokyo would be like letting athletes dope, feared it would cost the small Pacific nation a medal. Yes. Belgian weightlifter Anna Van Bellingen said last month, allowing Hubbard to compete was unfair for women and like a bad joke. That is correct. But um, just really, really solid stuff there from the International Olympic Committee. Once again, we, we, have, we have created a hell of a society for ourselves. It is, it is truly astonishing to watch as the new meritocracy arises.
I hope you enjoyed that clip from The Ben Shapiro Show. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you stay up to date with all our future content.